Hello, and welcome to Nameless Studio. I'm your host, Tyler. Today, we're going to be using this 5x7 gesso board and these encaustic bricks in order to create an encaustic artwork. All right, so to start, encaustics are a mix of Damar resin, purified beeswax, and oil pigments like cadmiums and irons that have been fused together into a block of wax to then be melted at 200 degrees Fahrenheit and then brushed onto a uh, appropriate substrate. Substrate that we are using right now is an ampersand gesso board. Um, there's a few different boards that we can use and we will go into that in future videos. But for now, if you're looking to get into it, any of the ampersand, either gesso or encaustic boards will work just fine for you. Now, when doing the first layer on the substrate, um, you can either go and just do a straight uh, clear coat layer of encaustic, or you can add some mixed media materials beforehand. Anything from graphite to colored pencils to crayons, uh, acrylic paint, oil paint, if you let it dry long enough. Um, it's really a great mixed media uh, medium. And pay no attention to the cattail underneath the table. That is my cat. Um, he will probably pop up at some point. So for now, we're just going to do a little colored pencil. And then we're going to start the clear coat. The clear coat is just a encaustic medium, um, which is a mixture of the Damar resin and beeswax. So we're going to find our first coat. As you can see, my brush isn't terribly clean. So we're going to go ahead and re-clean this. Um, I'm currently out of soy wax, um, which is a major component in brush cleaning. Um, it just helps pull that paint, um, the wax per se, out of the brush a lot easier. Um, so mine is currently um, in shipment, so it's a little bit more difficult uh, to clean your brush. So let's try it again, see where we're at. And that looks much better. So the brush that I'm using is also a Lang Nickel um, all-natural brush. You don't want to use synthetic brushes when it comes to encaustic because the heat will in fact destroy them. But even with natural hair brushes, um, over time the heat can affect it. As much as I love this Royal Lang Nickel brush, um, I've been using it for about three or four years and um, a lot of the bristles actually uh, pull out with the paint when I brush it now. So it is probably time to retire this brush um, just due to the nature that's been taking that heat for quite some time. Yeah. So now we are going to fuse our first layer. Um, I use an, a water torch, a butane torch. You can also use an electric heat gun to do the same thing. Um, this is a major, major component to the encaustic process. It allows you to fuse your layers together um, so that they are less brittle, um, as well as many other things that we'll get into on later videos as well. But for now, um, all we're doing is softly moving the torch back and forth to even out that first layer of clear coat. We're going to let it dry to the touch, um, just because we don't want the soft wax um, to kind of move because of the new hot wax we're putting on top of it. We're going to be using a new green um, that I am not used to. Um, it's a tra semi-transparent green, and most greens that I've used in the past have either been very opaque or very transparent. So um, I was looking for something kind of in the middle here. So this whole piece is more of just an experiment to see how this green is going to work. Um, and with really any art medium, it's always good to just experiment and explore the range of a medium um, without really much direction or thought as to what the end product or goal is going to be. Um, so when looking at this piece and probably the next one um, as a whole, just kind of think of these as um, color theory and compositional exercises more than uh, finished pieces because we're just seeing what this green does. So I've added a little bit of um, encaustic medium to this green to help thin it out and make it a little bit more transparent. 
the encaustic medium comes in either a big old block or in little pellets. I prefer the pellets just because they melt a little easier and it's a little easier to tell exactly how much you're using when you can just grab a handful of pellets rather than trying to melt a big old block um, on your griddle. And yes, I said griddle. I am using a pancake griddle as my heating source. So, applying a little bit of this paint, I have a little bit of gradient um, green going on here from adding that, that encaustic medium. Um, so we're just kind of putting some paint down um, just to see what's going to happen with it. Just kind of working it out. Um, the hotter your brush is and your substrate is, the smoother the application of the paint is going to be. Personally, I like my substrate to be cool to the touch, so it actually um, moves a little rougher across the substrate. Um, it actually allows for a little bit more texture. Secondary color we're going to be using on here is a um, cadmium orange, um, a very vibrant and very opaque orange. Um, comes in very good contrast to the green here, and I'm hoping that the opaque nature of it will allow it to kind of... Uh, stand in prominence even after the green kind of uh, takes a hold of it. So now that we have those two layers down, we are going to once again add some heats to it and really see exactly what this green does once it starts to uh, spread and move. This is really just an experiment more than anything else. So here we go. No real direction on this one. Again, really just trying to see what this green is capable of. So I'm just giving it soft little licks to just kind of move it down the substrate. And it is... It is not reacting how I was, how I was, how I was expecting. Um, there is not a lot of minutia between the dark and the light. Um, it doesn't separate terribly well. When it goes transparent, it goes very transparent, and the opaque stays very opaque. A lot of times you can actually stretch um, those aspects with some of the more semi um, transparent colors so that you get a lot more sort of features and details sort of in the middle of those transparent layers. Um, this one really just kept it pretty smooth. So interesting reaction. It also covered the uh, very opaque orange a lot more than I was expecting. I was expecting that to still hold a lot of vibrancy. Um, did not happen. So we have we have learned quite a bit. Um, from this first quick little firing of this new color. And we will be experimenting with it quite a bit more um, in the next few sessions. This being our first video, I thought I would take a minute to thank you for watching. If you enjoyed what you saw here today, please leave a like and subscribe for more videos like this. And if you'd like to see more Encaustic works, please check out my website at tylerrogersart.com. Link in the description below. Until next time. Be seeing you.